feel like a child. Oh, there's a recipe making me so special. We can eat drugs, have a Aging, aging beef. It's like going to uh, if you go to a, a Longhorn or you, or steakhouse and, you, and you, you you buy yourself a steak, man. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. Well, you go to a little small steakhouse and it's a little cheaper. What well, the difference is, uh, the, the 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 bigger steakhouses are buying the steaks that have been hung longer, have been aged uh, two, three, sometimes even four weeks, and uh, it makes a better it makes a better steak. It's going to have a different color to it, and it's going to be a whole lot tenderer, juicy. It's going to hold the juice in it more when you marinate it, put your seasoning on it. It's just going to be a whole lot better. Uh, and, and it's the same thing with the deer. You take a deer to age it, the longer you age it. I have aged my own personal deer uh, for two weeks, and uh, they just cut nothing but steaks out of it. Man, it's just like buying a steak at the steakhouse. You can cook it right, and you know what you're doing with it. Uh, but just aging, aging the deer, period. Uh, if you hang it, you know, in a cooler at right temperature, uh, temperature control can be different. You can age it faster, you can age it slower. Depends on what the cooler temperature is in the cooler. Uh, I age, I age a customer deer of seven days. Uh, that's just what I do. <laughs> This high quarter's got different cuts on it. And you can make steaks out of it, you can put roast out of it, you can do anything you want to with it. Hamburger, it don't matter what you want to do with it. But this is a good part of your deer also. And this is where you want to get your good steaks in. Uh, what I'm doing here is uh, a lot of this is gun shop right here. And uh, that's why all this blood and stuff's on here. Uh, I'm just cleaning all the bad off of it, getting all the bad stuff off of it and uh, trying to save any meat I can save. Anytime you get a deer in, uh, you always gonna have, we have a cause where we can shoot them with a gun in a deer hole. Uh, you're gonna have blood shot and stuff like that. So we just try to get in and clean everything we up we can and uh, save all the meat we can from the customers when I what we try to do. And you know, if you had this piece right here, you left all that silver skin on there and you cut this into a steak, when you ate that, you get that piece of meat in your mouth and you just chew it and chew it and chew it. Back up, that's the tip right there. This is used for, uh, uh, we do cube steak uh, out of it, clean it up, cut the bag off of it. I cut it like this right here, cut steaks out of it, and uh, cube it in a cuber, and make cube steaks out of it, just like that. Rounds, got round nose, so round nose, these are all your rounds. These are. <clears throat> which is from your hind quarter. <clears throat> you can do a roast out of this tip right here too. Matter of fact, I won't do one of these. These guys like roast. He said his mama could cook an excellent stew. She likes to take these roasts and put them in a big pot, put a bunch of butter in there with them, let them cook down, and then add all the other stuff to it. The cleaner the meat, the better it is. Alright, that piece of meat right there, 
that's a good piece of meat there. Uh, now something like, you know, say, oh, this is bloodshot right here. Well, if you don't clean this off, and say, if you don't clean this off, and then, you know, you, then you got this right here. This is a piece of bad looking meat. This is a piece of nice clean meat. I can take this piece of meat right here and slice it like this right here and you're going to have yourself a good steak right there, man. Take that thing and marinate it and season it, put it in a pan and cook it and that's going to be right. There's two steaks right there, nice and clean, no bloodshot in them. And, and, uh, and this deer's been aged good too. You can see the color in it and all. Uh, so this deer's going to be, man, you put that frying pan just like it and you can cut it with a fork if you cook it right. And then you have a lot of uh, blood vessels, uh, silver skin, uh, stuff like that in it. And we just try to clean all that stuff out of there, get all the bad out, separate it. All right, we cut some stew meat for a customer. And uh, when I cut my stew meat, I like to cut it and make it nice and clean. And the reason is, is uh, if you get some stew meat that's got some silver skin on it or got some, you know, any kind of bad old pieces of fat, you know, uh, some gristle, anything in it, it, it don't make good stew. When I make a stew, uh, I like to, when I put that spoonful of stew in my mouth, I want that to fall apart in my mouth. I don't want to chew on it for an hour and have to spit it out. And if you look at that meat right there, that ain't nothing but pure, clean meat. And if you cook that right, man, you, that's the best deer stew you'll ever eat right there. And, uh, and it takes cutting your meat right. You got all the silver skin on here and uh, any, anything bad that you got on there, we just want to trim it off and we'll discard it and trim all the silver skin off. We can put it in a brine, and then all we got left is some nice clean meat. I take and cut it in strips, and then I start cutting my stew meat out of it. And then you'll end up with just nice clean meat, no gristle, no fat, no silver skin, no nothing. And uh, put that in your pot and, and simmer it for a little bit. And I guarantee you put that in your mouth, and, and it'll just, you can take it out of the pot and just pull it apart. The best meat in the whole deer is this tenderloin right here, which I haven't cleaned up yet, and this back strap, which is the tenderloin, which is this. This runs down to seal back and then runs up into the neck. This is your neck. All this will be cut off. This is going to be a roast for the neck <clears throat> uh, These are the best parts of the whole deer as far as meat goes. Say so you wanted a T-bone steak. Well, this, these, these two... Uh, tenderloins right here are, th that's how big they are. They're not big. They're on the inside in here. They're real short. Then you got the back strap on the outside that comes down on the spine and joins it like this. So when you get a T-bone steak and you cut it, it's got that T in it. That is that backbone and then that little piece of meat in the on the other side of that bone, that's this tenderloin. So you get both on the T-bone. That's why I love the T-bone. T-bone is my steak. But when we get done, we're gonna have good meat, and we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna make uh, this guy want some roast, uh, uh, back straps, and uh, tenderloins, and burger with no fat in it. And we're gonna make it as clean and good and ready, and ready to go. I like my meat when the customer gets it out of the freezer and unpause it. He ain't got to do no cutting on it. He ain't got to do nothing but wash it off a little bit. Put it in the pan and cook it. I've been with Bree since she was five years old <clears throat> and uh, didn't have any boys in. Uh, I got a little boy now, Katie Bug, but uh, and he's coming up to be a little hunter. But uh, I had to raise Bree to be my little boy, so I uh, took her out in the woods, man. She was real interested, in wanted to do it, got to hunt, got to fishing, and uh, actually take grown men with me now to be out fishing, and they don't like it. But uh, that's just the way we roll in Bree. Right now I'm wrapping the hamburger meat. I just ground it up. I, I usually put like a pound or a pound and a half in a, in a package. 